welcome back. So far we have discussed probability spaces, right? So we have, we said the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment. We said that uh, so we then created a sigma algebra of events on the sample space, and we uh, then we define probability measures on a measurable space. Uh, so it turned out that omega is countable. Assigning probability measures is possible to it's possible to assign probability measures to all subsets of omega, whereas when omega is uncountable, such as zero one interval or infinite coin toss model. In those cases, it was an uncountable sample space. Uh, in that case, uh, we had to settle for a smaller sigma algebra and assign probabilities, right? So now we, so so far we have completed that one section, right? That uh, that just talks about what probability spaces are and how this probability measures are assigned to a measurable space. Now we begin a new, new section, okay? Called uh, so this is on conditional probability. So I will start with definition. So we have a probability space omega f p. Okay, so everything so now that we know probability spaces everything we do will start with an omega f p. Okay. We have a sample space a sigma algebra on the sample space and some probability measure p on omega f. Okay. So this is a probability space. Uh, let B, B, an event such that P B is greater than zero. Definition. The conditional probability of A given B is defined as Okay. So, what you see you are fixing a particular event B that is so what do I mean by B is an event I mean that B is an element of F the sigma algebra F right I am given this probability space. So, I consider some B belonging to F such that the probability of B is strictly positive. Okay, so it's it's a set whose probability measure is not zero. Okay, uh, so and we then we say so and A is another F measurable set. Okay, A is another event. We say the conditional probability of A given B, right? This is what we are trying to define. This is the first time we are seeing this, so this is the definition, right? So we define the conditional probability of A given B denoted like this. So A vertical line B, okay, vertical line B that is defined as probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B, okay. This is by definition, okay. There is no Y, right. Definitions are definitions, that is it, they will just be taken. Uh, so, intuitively, of course, you, you will see that we are simply scaling the so you are fixing an event B and you are looking at the probability that A and B happen and scaling it by probability of B, right. That is what is intuitively happening. Uh, so, you see why this condition is important, right. If not the denominator will be 0, right. So, you have to condition on events of non-zero probability. First of all, you have to condition only on F measurable sets, not on arbitrary subsets of omega and you also have to condition only on events which have strictly positive probability okay so caution caution so we cannot c 
condition on zero probability events. So, what I am saying is the event to the right of this vertical line must be non zero probability. See, this A can be anything, A can be any F measurable set, but what is on the right side of this vertical line must be a non zero probability uh, event. Okay. So, this is this is a fact that is I mean it is very easy to see why you need it, otherwise, this is meaningless. Right, the denominator being zero is meaningless, but very often, uh, sometimes you can get into uh, trouble with this. Right, sometimes you miss miss out on this. Okay, uh, so for example, if you are talking about, let us say, omega, let's say zero one interval, f is Borel, and p is your uniform Lebesgue measure, you cannot, for example, condition on, say, rationals. Right? Why? Because rationals have zero probability measure under that uniform Lebesgue measure, the, the Lebesgue measure. Right? So you cannot ask a question like, "Oh, what is the probability that uh, my number is between zero and half, given that it is a rational?" Right? Understand what I'm saying? So if I'm talking about a as the event that the number is between zero and half and b is the event that the number is rational and I am talking about just the Lebesgue measure. So, that question is meaningless, you should never ask such a question and there is no answer to that question. Okay. You can only condition on, you cannot condition on Cantor set for example, because you will, you if you have not already shown it, you will show in your homework that Cantor set has 0 measure. Right? You should not say what is the probability that my number is between 0 and half given that it is a Cantor number, no right, there is no such the question is meaningless, you cannot answer it. Okay. Actually, there, there is actually a, uh, there is a paradox which I think is called Borel's paradox or Borel Kolmogorov paradox or something. So, which takes a sphere and asks about the conditional distribution of uh, the angle, the polar angle or whatever, given that you are on one of the diameters okay, with a uniform measure on the sphere, right, and you get multiple answers just like we saw an earlier paradox Bertrand's paradox. right? So, this is another paradox which gives you multiple answers and why is that? Because you are conditioning on a 0 measure set. right? So, you can look that up if you want. So, you can get into all sorts of uh, inconsistent and paradoxical situations if you do not, if you are not careful about this. Okay? theorem let b in f then p of dot given B. Uh, so this P of dot given B, which is a mapping from F to zero one, is a probability measure on uh, on omega. Okay. So, what are we saying? This theorem says if you fix some uh, event with positive probability, then you take, so you take, you fix this b and you look at probability of dot given b, by, by, by dot I mean you will take arguments from f, right and you, and this is the definition, right. Uh, what you can show is that this guy is a valid probability measure on omega f. Okay. So, you have to prove this, right. this is a theorem, so you have to prove this, right. How do you prove it? 
you have to prove how many things, two things, three things actually, right, for a probability measure. So, you have to prove that, uh, yeah, if you input, if you input empty set here, you should get 0, if you input sample space here, you should get 1 and finally, countable additivity of disjoint events, right. So, the first two are trivial, right, if your A were to be null, a null intersection B will be null, right, 0 by something which is positive is 0. Similarly, if uh, A is the whole sample space, then omega intersection B will be B, so you will get 1, right. Finally, to verify countable additivity, so if you want, so the first two are easy, right, uh, 1 and 2 uh, properties are easy, right. Uh, to show countable additivity, consider A i belongs to F i equal to 1 comma 2 comma dot dot dot. which are disjoint, right. I have to consider a countable collection of disjoint events and show that this set function has countable additivity property, right. So, you have to, so you have something like that. right? this I have to show is equal to sum over i equal to 1 to infinity p of a given b, right, that is what I have to show. Huh. So, this is equal to by definition, so I, I, I invoke this, okay, this is equal to p of uh, b and here I have p of union i equals 1 through infinity a i intersected with b, right. Now, there is an identity, has a theoretic identity, right. So, if you have something like a union b intersection c, right, it is a intersection c union b intersection c. So, but except this is a infinite, countably infinite union. So, you can use that set theoretic identity to get probability of, uh, so this is this union intersection B, okay. So, now I will have union of A i intersection B, correct. Now, A i s are disjoint, therefore, A intersection B, let us if you want to call the C i, those C i s will, so will also be disjoint. So, my P is a probability measure on my original space, right. So, P satisfies countable additivity, correct. So, then, so the by countable additivity of P, you have this is equal to sum over i equals 1 through infinity. Uh, probability of a i intersection b divided by probability of b, right. And that is exactly what you want, right. This is equal to sum over i equals 1 through infinity probability of a i given right. Fine. Everyone okay? Any questions? Very elementary proof. I just did it so that it just took a minute. So, I did it, right. Yes. Okay, so, even intersection B, the even is uh, closing a coin and closing a die. Mm -hmm. 
So the I'm taking a message to be us getting a heads. Well, well, well. Okay. So you have to see all of this happens. See. Uh, you cannot, you are not operating in two different probability spaces, right. There is only one probability space, omega fp, right. So, you are not talk, talking about one experiment involving tossing of a coin, another involving throwing of a die, right. So, that is not the scenario under consideration. Yeah, you are talking about a given experiment, given, so your random experiment, its sample space, the sigma algebra, the probability measure, everything is fixed. Okay. Now, we are conditioning on a particular event B with positive probability and I am saying that whatever I defined here is a valid probability measure for any B with positive probability. Okay. That is all I have said. So, if you, if you want to consider, consider for example, the uh, throw of a die uh, F you can take it as omega is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, f is 2 power omega because it is a discrete sample space, p is let us say uh, the uniform 1 by 6 on each of them. Uh, you can take as an example, you can take b to be the event that an even number shows up. So, you can look for the probability that uh, given that it is an even number, what is the probability that it is 4 or something like that, right. You can calculate it, right. Okay. 